Welcome to another ZBrush tutorial. Very quick, if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, turn on notifications to get more ZBrush videos like this and like this video to help my channel out. We are gonna jump right into creating armor in ZBrush. First, what we need to do is we need a base mesh. If you don't have a base mesh already, you can go up to the light box, go to project, and select any of these base meshes that they already have made for you and follow along. Really all we need to do now is select our mask tool, like our mask lasso, and draw out some selections on our mesh. Now with these selections drawn on our mesh, all we need to do is go to Subtool, go all the way down to the bottom, go to Extract, and we'll change our thickness to something like 0 0.001 and hit Extract. And if the thickness looks okay, then we'll hit Accept. So if we clear our mask and we turn on Polyframe, we can see the interior and exterior poly groups marked by the color on the mesh. If you hold Control and Shift and click on the inside poly group, it'll hide everything else. Hold Control and Shift again, click and drag outside of your object, and it will show the opposite, so now the inside polygroup is hidden. Now we need to go over to Geometry, Modify Topology, and Delete Hidden. Go to the Geometry menu, go to Edge Loop, and hit Group Loops. It's going to change the geometry a little bit and make it look a little bit cleaner. Once we do this, we need to close our Edge Loops, go to Z Remesher, make sure that half is turned on, and hit Z Remesh. I'm just gonna hit Z Remesh a couple more times. This may seem time consuming, but I hit Z Remesher as many as five times when I do this because I wanna get as low poly count as I can possibly get. I wanna go back to Edge Loop and I wanna find Panel Loops. You can change the thickness of your panel loops here and you can actually change the number of loops that it's going to create once you hit Panel Loops. If I zoom in on the edges, you can see that the interior poly group is back and along this edge is a nice clean poly group. So now I can go to my brush menu, find Z Modeler, and go into my edges here, hover over an edge, hold space, select inset, edge loop complete, click on this edge and inset it all the way around your object. And look at that. You've got a nice clean poly loop all the way around the outside of your object. It's not perfect, but if you don't like the topology, you can actually just repeat this process all over again. Hold control and shift, click on the interior poly group, select the opposite, delete hidden, and then just go over to group loops and hit Z Remesh a couple of more times at half. And it's just gonna clean up your topology even more and reduce the poly count until you get this nice clean mesh left over. Then just go to Panel Loops and you get this nice beautiful topology with edge loops built in all the way around the outside of your object. So what do you do when you get to this point and you actually wanna start making armor? Well, as long as you follow the steps I just showed you to get along to this point and get some nice looking topology, edge loops are your best friend. So, grab your Z Modeler brush in your brush menu, hover over a polygon face, hold space, go to Q Mesh, Poly Group All, and just grab a face and pull it out. Now hold space, change Q Mesh to Poly Group Island, drag the bottom group, pull it down, drag the border, pull it out, and now you've got a nice little border around your shoulder pads. The beauty of this is now we can go over to Poly Groups on the right hand side and go down to Group by Normals. When we turn this on, based on the normals or the direction that every face is facing, it's gonna create a poly group out of those faces. So now you've got poly groups pointing in every direction. Now if we hold Control and Shift and click on this top poly group, it'll hide everything else. And while everything is hidden, you can hold Control and Shift and hit X, and it expands your selection. You can do this as many times as you want, and then hit Control Z to go back. Now if I go up to Stroke, Curve Functions, I'm going to turn poly groups off and just leave Border turned on and hit Frame Mesh and this inserts a nice curve around the outside border of my entire object. Now you can go to your brush menu, grab an IMM brush, grab something like bolts or bolt heads, go back up to stroke, go to curve, turn curve mode on, and change the curve step to adjust the spacing of how the bolts insert when you click on that curve. Hover your mouse away, change your brush size, and that will change the size of the bolts and then click on your curve and it will insert them along the curve. Also, once you've adjusted your brush size and adjusted your curve step to get these spaced out the way you want them, you can also grab the curve and just move it slightly if you wanna try and get these into place a little bit better. Another step you can do is go to your move topological brush in your brush menu, change the brush size to be really large, and since all of these bolts are their own poly groups, it will allow you to just grab it with the move brush and move them individually. Really, the biggest takeaway from all of this is to keep your polygon count as low as possible. Use poly groups to control your edges and borders, and use insert meshes with frame mesh in order to insert cool objects all around your armor. Just remember that insert brushes like the curve strap, snap, 
or any other insert mesh brush can't be used with subdivision levels, so try to keep your polygon count as low as possible, and don't subdivide your mesh until you're absolutely ready. And that is pretty much it. The rest is just messing around with brushes to get different shapes and cleaning up your topology. If you liked this video, don't forget to leave me a comment and a thumbs up to help my channel out. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel for future tutorials and more videos on ZBrush. And until next time...